Hi everyone, hope you're doing well today. Today I'm going to service my front and rear differentials. I'm going to pull the differential covers on my Dana 27 front and my Dana 44 rear on my 1965 CJ5 and going to drain the old fluid out of there and refill with all new. Now, I haven't done this since I've owned it. I've just topped it off and made sure it was fine. So today is the first time I'm actually going to see the condition of the gear oil that's in the uh, differentials. And also, while we have them open, I'm going to uh, go ahead and um, actually you can see here the tag is still on it. Um, but while it's open, I'm actually going to try to find the actual gear set and just verify uh, the gear ratio. Uh, the tag does say 427s in the front and the rear, but while we have it open, we'll go ahead and see if we can look at the ring gear and see if it's stamped on there. Let me show you some of the things that I'm going to use today to do this job. First of all, I'm going to start here with the oil. Uh, I went and got some Valvoline AEW90 uh, gear oil. It's good for the transmissions and for the uh, differentials. This stuff is supposedly good. It's GL4 and GL5 rated. Um, it calls for it in the book to be GL4 rated. Basically, in the transmissions, it's more important. You don't want any type of gear oil that has additives and things in it with modern oils that will eat away at the brass and the sensitive metals in the transmission. But anyway, this is for the differentials today. That, that's not going to have any bearing. Uh, you also want to get yourself one of these little pumpers. It's like a soap dispenser, basically. It just screws right onto the top of these one-quart bottles and you'll see later on in the video how that works. I'm also going to use plenty of towels, and if you've ever got gear oil on yourself, especially old gear oil, it stinks. I'm gonna put some gloves on today and try to keep that off of me. I have a screwdriver, some little pry bars to get the old differential covers off, hammer, a rubber mallet if I need it, a weighted mallet if I need it, my little air ratchet, half inch sockets to remove the bolts on the diff covers, a 5 8 inch wrench to pull off the drain plugs. Here I have my oil pan. It is actually half full of gear oil from the transmission when I actually drained and refilled that. Brand new gaskets for the Dana 27 and the Dana 44. These came from Walks 4x4. I'm not going to use any RTV today. We're just going to put these in and see what happens if it leaks at all. So. We'll see, we'll give it a shot, see if it works. If not, I can always pull it back open and put some RTV silicone on there. And also I want to take a minute and show this to you guys. This here I bought off of Amazon. You can get them off eBay. This is definitely a must. Now I also have a Haynes manual and that's okay, but this here is an actual Jeep service manual and it is fantastic. I mean, it tells you everything you want to know about these vehicles and this here this book here goes from i believe the cj5s with the f head all the way up to some of the amc jeeps so just be careful when you order them or when you buy them um, that you get the right one for the right year of your vehicle but this here is a very if you're working on an old jeep and you are restoring it yourself or just doing general maintenance like this on it this book i think it cost me around 30 bucks is definitely a must for any old Jeep enthusiast. All right, and while we're on the book, as you can see here, it's very detailed. We're under the lubrication section, and it tells you everything from bearings down to the transmission, differentials, to even the motor, the four-cylinder and the V6 motors, what you need to do. But if we go here to, let's see here, section nine, it shows the transfer case but it also shows the front and rear differentials. And we'll scan over here, and it shows for two and a half pints. Don't focus. Two and a half pints on the front and rear differentials, the Dana 27 and the Dana 44. Now it also says here it needs to be GL4, and what I have is GL4 rated, SAE 80 in the winter and 90 in the summer, which is why I've got 80W90 gear oil. But like I said, this here is a book that any Jeep enthusiast or anybody working on an old Jeep could definitely use. So anyway, let's close this up, start getting to it. Real quick, not sure any of you have these things, but they are awesome. We're putting all my bolts into this little pan. It's magnetic, so everything I put in there will stick.
Alrighty, there we go. There she is. I'll go ahead and get this diff cover cleaned up and get the old gasket here. If you can see, this old gasket needs to come off. I'm gonna scrape all that off there, try to clean it off, and uh, go from there. Okay, there you can see, here's your ring gear and your pinions back in, back in there. Your spider gear's here. This is what, when you bring the power into this, this is what puts the power out through the axle shafts to each axle. Now, if you're watching this, you probably understand that, but for somebody who doesn't know what this is, that's what that does. Pinion spins this way and the ring gear spins this way. And that's what puts power out to your axle shafts to actually make your rotational force go to the ground. As you can see, it actually is in pretty good shape. Now I'll go ahead and rotate it here. Move the Jeep forward a little bit and check it out, but the teeth all look pretty good. Um, nothing looks broke, chipped, or any metal shavings coming out. Um, so yeah, that's awesome. Glad to see that. Okay, here's what I was talking about as far as trying to verify your gear set, your gear ratio. As you can see, if you can read that there, it says 47-11. There's a lot of numbers on this ring gear, okay? But the most important one is that 47-11. This 47-11 tells me that there are 47 teeth now you could physically count them but there are 47 teeth on the ring gear and if you look back in here if I can get my flashlight in there for you you can see the pinion back in there and that's what messes with the ring gear that's what connects right to your drive shaft that has 11 teeth on it so again the ring gear has 47 teeth and the pinion has 11 teeth now to figure out your gear ratio take my calculator here you'll take 47, which is the number on your ring gear, divide that by 11, and that gives you 427 is your gear ratio. Now I have a 427 gear set, so that tells me that this differential, and I'm sure the rear matches, are all factory and have never been messed with or worked on, which is nice. So again, while it's open, while we're draining the oil, might as well check it and verify that we have a 427 gear set. Cool little quick tip. Okay. Now we have the inside of the differential cover completely clean and all the old gasket is off of there and off of the actual axle housing itself. Go ahead and take one of the bolts, get it started a while. Don't force it through the paper, I don't want to rip it. I actually just kind of thread it in there like so to get it started, like this. Everything's clean, everything's cleaned out of there real well. Start it on. There it is, back together. You're gonna need a 5 8 inch open-ended wrench. We'll put it on like this and open her up. Something that I did want to mention was that the factory service manual calls for these differential bolts, differential cover bolts to be torqued down to 15 to 25 foot pounds. So I have set my torque wrench here to 25 foot pounds 
And I'm gonna go around here and just torque all these up real quick before we fill it up with oil. Okay, let's take this tube I've screwed onto the top of my gear oil bottle. I'm gonna stick this tube in the fill hole. I'm just gonna pump. Okay, starting to come out of there. So that tells me it's full. So go ahead. Pull this out, put it on my rag here. Put that back in. Tighten it up. Not over tighten it, just make it snug. Okay. And we're done. On to the rear. Okay, now it's time to start on the rear axle, which is a Dana 44 two-piece tapered axle. So basically the axle shaft ends have a tapered end with a keyway, um, and the hub and brake assembly are all one piece. You have to use a puller to get them apart, and um, not a very strong axle, but under an early CJ5, it'll do just fine. So let's get to it. There you have it. That is the drain and refill of the differentials on my 1965 CJ5. We will see how the paper gaskets work. If they fail, I will eventually redo them with RTV. But for now, there's no leaks. Everyone looks good. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.